So who wants to have zero downtime for their services? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that everybody does. Everybody would want that, okay? But if we really think about zero, okay, is that really possible to have zero downtime? And do we really want that? You know, it's kind of funny enough that there are people like, like me, for example, who think that aiming for zero downtime might actually not be a good idea to do it always. Okay, and then I'll explain you why. So keeping our services up is not just a matter of technology. It's a matter of risk, cost assessment, procedure, and most importantly, people. So welcome to Milan, welcome to PG Day. My name is Gabriele Bartolini, and today I will take you through a journey about business continuity uh, of PostgreSQL databases, starting from zero. So this is a slide about myself. I've been doing open source since 95. I discovered Postgres in 97 and switched definitely to PostgreSQL in 2000, thanks to Marco Nencerini, who's, who's been like a hammer, saying, go away from MySQL and use Postgres. I'm also a Lean and, Devel and DevOps pr pr practitioner. I'm one of the co-founders of both the Italian PostgreSQL user group and uh, PostgreSQL Europe. I'm actually one of the four founders of PostgreSQL Europe that is organizing uh, the conference in Warsaw uh, at the end of the month. I've also been an entrepreneur and worked with Second Quarter from 2008. And I'm one of the authors of that book that you find there. And by the way, I'm the one that came up with the name Barman, you know, the tool that you, I don't know if you, who uses Barman here? Okay. So, Business continuity is everything, yes, everything it takes to keep up, to keep your business uh, services up. Everything, okay? In this everything, there's also infrastructure, IT. Uh, and when we talk about IT, we normally refer to disaster recovery, which is all it takes to reduce the risk of data loss before during and after a disaster. Before, during, and after. While HA, or high availability, is all it takes to recover in the shortest amount of time following a disaster. Before, during, and after. Okay? So what kind of failures or disasters can we think about? We think, can think about hardware failures, uh, security holes, uh, human errors, natural disasters, unfortunately. And when we talk about availability, it's actually a metric. It's uptime divided the sum of uptime and downtime. So you've probably heard nine, the five nines uptime, okay, as 99.999% over a certain amount of time. So, let's talk about objectives. Objectives are the only thing, the only factor that should drive uh, our decisions. Let's forget about technology. Technology is how we get to those objectives. And fortunately, you know, we can think about two objectives. One is the recovery point objective, RPO, which is how much data we can afford to lose. Zero. Of course, we all want zero data loss, okay? And recovery time objective, or RTO, is uh, how long it takes for me to recover after a disaster. So the whole branch of business continuity is also called service uh, reliability. You're probably aware of some, for example, Google 
you know, the site reliability engineers, you know, they talk about reliability of systems, okay? And, you know, we have to talk about cost of downtime. We, you know, there are companies, you know, if they s s go down for one hour, they lose millions of or euros or dollars, okay? So it's about risk, about risk management, making decisions, uh, mm, evaluating costs, benefits, and risks. And then probably all of us are familiar maybe with SLAs, okay, but we have also to talk about SLI, SLOs before SLAs. So I usually say choose your SLIs, know your SLOs, and then define your SLAs. SLI is the indicators of service uh, level. So like you can choose a metric, like for example, RTO, measure that, you know, you do tests, you do drills, simulations, you build up some, uh, some benchmarks, some cases, you have some numbers, and that's your SLOs based on your experience. And then you define, when you have contracts with customers, uh, the agreement so that you know that your SLOs should be inside SLAs. Otherwise, you know, if you choose SLAs that are, you know, uh, not tuned with your SLOs, you might have troubles. All of these is to enforce uh, all of us to think about uh, practicing, testing. That's all it takes. Become familiar with procedures. So in this slide, some notes, you know, I, I could be talking for, for days about this topic. So we, we simplify things. So we, we, we talk about Postgres on Linux. Um, servers, when I'll be talking about servers, they can be physical, either physical or virtual, it doesn't matter. Uh, but storage must be redundant, okay? So at least RAID is required. And we talk about volumes as redundant disk mounted on a system, okay? I'm not even thinking about disks that are not redundant, okay? We don't start, okay, if we don't have that. So ready? Are you ready? Okay, good. So let's start. So one Postgres server. So we've, we've got one Postgres server name Hope, and uh, that's it. And by the way, by the way, our SLOs could be RPO0, okay, and RTO0. So uptime, sorry, uptime 100% or 99%. Take a server that is there, never crashes, stays uptime the whole year, Bingo, we've done 100% of time just like that. Hope. Okay? So this is just to, you know, put everything in, in perspective. Um, but, you know, that's not... I wouldn't base my business on this, okay? So what... Why is RPO infinite here? Actually, it's not infinite. It's from the start of the, of the, you know, of the post. No incident yet. No, it's that when that happens, you've lost everything. Okay, that's it. That's when there's a failure, in this case, you've lost everything. And RTO is not applicable because we, we've never... We, we don't, we don't take backups, we can't recover, okay? So as they say at Google, hope is not a strategy. So, and by the way, this is unfortunately more common than, than you'd expect, okay? So let's move to 10. So we'll start, we put first gear, we start moving, and uh, we add logical backups. 
So we've got logical backups. We take, uh, I mean, the frequency here is one backup per day. So we, we, we use pgdump. Who uses pgdump? Good. So we all use pgdump. Okay. Every day we take backups. How do you feel now? Better. better. Do you feel better? Yeah? Yeah, okay. Well, I don't. I still feel like, you know, RPO is infinite and RTO is not applicable. Why? Because a backup is valid only if it's tested. We're not, something is missing there. We, we don't recover databases. And as funny as it seems, we are all laughing here, you know, but, you know, we don't, we don't regularly test our backups. Okay, so if we, I know that we, we are going to raise our hands, but maybe not everyone is, on, is being honest. Okay. So, let's add one further step. So, logical restores. So, we've got our Postgres server. We take logical backups, of course, on the same disk of the Postgres server, okay? Or maybe, no, different, sorry, on, on, on a different volume on the same SAN. Because SAN, uh, you know, a storage area network never breaks, okay? And they never break, okay? But when, <laughs> when they break, okay? And that happens, okay? So forget about you know, sands that don't break. Um, so we test our backups with store. So we have another server, maybe our local machine, and we, perfor we perform PG restore on that. So we start measuring some objectives here. So we can measure the time for PG restore. That's already a very good metric we have, okay? And uh, we also have RPO. RPO is measured by the frequency of backups. So let me explain. So if we, for example, if, if we take daily backups at 4 a.m., uh, our RPO is 24 hours. Does it make sense? Because we are unlucky and of course, the server breaks the second before we take the backup or the backup finishes the following day. Okay? We always have to be pessimistic here. Because if something goes wrong, it's on Friday night at 5, 5 p.m. Okay? And by the way, it's always 5 p.m. Friday, you know, uh, in any part of the world. Well, RTO is the maximum time of recovery. So it's not just PG restore, because if the server goes down, we have to provision another server, okay? We have to configure another server. And that's automated, by the way. You know, everyone uses Puppet, Chef, uh, Ansible, okay? So it's just a matter of reconfiguring our, our infrastructure as code, okay? And the time to restore the last backup, which we have. So over time, we can build a sort of uh, uh, statistics for, for this. So have we really, really thought about everything? No, I'm telling you, no, it's not. Otherwise, no. <laughs> Time of reaction. Okay, we assume that Im we immediately detect the failure. Okay. But, you know, if it happens at 5.30 on Friday, we leave at 5, for example, and we, we notice that, ah, before, okay, earlier. 
earlier than five. So, but before Monday, we don't realize that, okay? Or maybe, you know, there's, there are other cases, of course, I'm making, you know, I'm, I'm being a bit silly here, but anyway. Uh, maybe a problem happened four days ago and we, and we realized that only today. Or we performed a bad, bad update or a bad delete on data, okay? Anyway, do you think that this architecture works for you? Well, it might work. I mean, in, in some cases, you know, in some cases, this could be more than enough. You know, if you can afford losing one day of DASA, you know, you can afford, you know, having a few hours or a few days to restore your, ser your server. You know, that's fine. As long as you're aware of that and you know what you're doing and you, you've done a risk assessment analysis, okay? So if you know what you're doing, that's fine, okay? In order to react promptly, of course, we need monitoring. We need monitoring in place and from now on we assume that we have it, okay? So in general, you know, we assume that for business continuity, this, this, is, not, this is not enough, okay? We need f to find ways to reduce both uh, RPO and RTO, okay? Now let's move forward. How? Fortunately, PostgreSQL has got built-in capabilities for point-in-time recovery. And, you know, the first time I... I tried to work with point-in-time recovery, I thought of this. Okay, I said, I'm uh, uh, Marty McFly, you know, I can go back in time and do whatever, recreate another Marty, make sure that I don't meet another Ma Marty McFly, and, and that's it. Anyway, it's, the, go the good thing is that it's part of PostgreSQL core, it's fully open source, it's been there since 81, 8.1, sorry, not 81, I was 85. Um, from 8.1, allows us to rebuild a cluster up to a point in time. And uh, it's based on concepts that evolved from crash recovery and brought to the implementation of synchronous streaming replication both physical and logical. So as you see, this is very common in Postgres, and that's what Simon was mentioning before. We build incrementally. Okay, that's, that's the beauty of Postgres. And uh, concepts here uh, include uh, hot base backups. Yeah, hot. I mean, we, we don't, we often, uh, you know, undervalue this, this word, but you know, for example, other databases make, make you pay not to block your rights when you do uh, an, a backup, okay? PostgreSQL allows us to perform online backups. Uh, it's based on continuous wall archiving and, uh, and uh, the recovery principles. And uh, with synchronous streaming replication, we can have RPO zero, and we'll see that, okay? Uh, PostgreSQL, uh, however, allows us to use only an API for that, okay? So there's a lot of functions to do that. There's, there are procedures that it's, believe me, it's quite easy to, to, to mess things up if we don't do them properly, okay? Unless we use PG-based backup, okay? So basically, we perform a continuous copy of wall data, so the transactional logs. I'm using wall because from version 10, that's the actual term. We, we removed xlog name from any function uh, in the database. We ju we're just calling them walls. Um, we take physical base backups, and uh, recovery is basically in copying the base backup to another location. Uh, start the standby, I mean the server, in recovery mode and replay all wall files until we reach the target. And uh, fortunately, we have 
wrapped up all of these into an open source tool called Barman that we have the, you know, it's, pro it's probably one of the most uh, backup tools for Postgres, Postgres us used out there. It's open source, written in Python, and uh, yeah, it's available there. It's developed by, by us. So let's add Barman to the game. So this is the, the architecture. We have Postgres, we have continuous backups there. Okay. Barman, you know, among other things, allows us to perform remote backup and recovery, uh, manage multiple servers centrally, uh, manage a catalog of backups and the wall archive, uh, manage retention policies, and uh, we, we have options with Barman in terms of copy method. We can use both PostgreSQL streaming, um, as I said, using PG-based backup. It's very practical, for example, for small databases, for Windows, for Docker, because we just have to uh, communicate via PostgreSQL port, or rsync via SSH, which gives us access to incremental backup and recovery through hard links, a parallel backup and recovery, which has been introduced in 2.2, so we can spawn several processes for both backup and recovery, speeding up operations. And by the way, thanks for example to Subiso, a dot .it who, who helped us develop this. There's network uh, compression and bandwidth limitation. We can also choose how we ship vault files, you know, the traditional method through archive command. So RPO is roughly 16 megabytes of uh, wall data, transactional data. Or we can define a time, so for example, RPO five minutes, and uh, PostgreSQL every five minutes closes the wall files file and ships it. Or streaming, so through streaming replication, Barman is able from version 1.6 to communicate via uh, streaming replication for wall, uh, wall receive. It basically reuse PG receive X log or receive wall from version 10, that's how it's called. And uh, it's a continuous stream for, that gives us uh, the possibility to have near zero RPO. This is a, an example of you know, configuration in Postgres. We enable archive command. We define the archive command here. We also enable uh, wall senders and wall replication slots. And uh, we define that to logical, just in case we want to use logical replication in the future. It could be, it could be archive uh, or hot standby, okay? And this is an example in Barman. So we have the Angus Young database uh, with, uh, you know, uh, rsync copy method. Uh, we also specify how we connect to Postgres. We define recovery window of six months as reten retention policy, incremental backup, parallel jobs. We, we enable both archiver and streaming archiver, and we use a replication slot. Okay. So, how do you feel now? Again, better, it, well, you know, you know, when I ask this, you shouldn't say better, you know, it's still RPO infinite and RTO not available because a backup is valid only if it's tested. So, although Barman reduces risks, we still have to implement systematic tests to, in order to redu reduce the risk of our business. So let's add one server for recovery, okay? So we, we have another server that we use there so that through hook scripts, after the backup is finished, we restore that server for testing, okay? 
that's what I usually get. What a waste. Why, were you, why are we using that? Well, but have you actually ever thought about using it for testing or business intelligence, for example? And the good of that is that through hook scripts, you know, you can, and Barman has hook scripts for pre and post backup and pre and post archiving with retry option. So it retries until the script succeeds. We can, as I said, issue a recovery on a remote server when the backup finishes. This is an example of script for recovery. We connect to a remote server via SSH. We stop the Postgres server. We issue a, a BAMA recover with immediate as target. And we perform incremental recovery that way. And we start the PostgreSQL server. Set it as post backup script. OK, yeah, some, let's think about this. So what are the outcomes? So we systemically, systematically test our backups, and that allows us to also measure how long it takes. And if the server is identical, that server could be used for you know, recovery server in case the master goes down. You can use a different data server, and as you know, always with Postgres, just be creative. With, you know, you can do really whatever. You've got primitives, you know what you can do, just be creative. No licensing constraints, nothing, you know, just your creativity. So in this way, we can have RPO nearly zero. We test our backups so we know they work. So RTO is time of reaction plus recovery time, which we have measured. And so, for example, maybe it takes one day to recover a large database. Okay. Is it acceptable or not? That's up to us. Okay. We perform a risk analysis and we decide that's okay. We're fine with this. If it takes four hours, six hours, that's fine. Okay, these servers are more than enough. But now let's move on and we'll try and improve RTO. And this architecture is, is the entry level, as I always say, for business continuity. So replication. Replication is the step forward. You know, it's been part of the core of Postgres. Uh, it's a master slave with multiple standby servers architecture. And uh, it's an evolution of point in time recovery. And it's basically, uh, instead of stopping a server at a point in time, the replica is in continuous recovery. Meaning that wall data is uh, continuously replayed as soon as it is received by the standby. So with hot standby, we can have read-only databases. And uh, uh, it works both on, with streaming and fallback method using uh, file-based pooling of wall files. It also supports cascading replication, which is very interesting. Also, there's synchronous replication that you know, allows us to reach two safe replication, so a commit of a right, of a right transaction waits until it is written on, on, on both the master and the standby. So that means that we need more than a, a synchronous client, because if that goes down, also the master goes down. And from 9.6, we can have read consistency of a cluster uh, through the remote apply level for synchronous commit. With synchronous replication, we have zero data loss. So now we, we're going faster. Uh, we add two uh, PostgreSQL servers. So we have Barman. We use Barman to recreate, to create a standby. We link that through streaming replication, and then Barman also receive 
wall files, both in streaming and archiving. And then through Barman, War, Barman Restore Wall, Barman Wall Restore, Barman Wall Restore, uh, which is open source, we can use that as fallback method for, for, for the replica. We can then add you know, our recovery server as we had before. And we set it up as a symmetric cluster. This is very important. So basically, these two servers are identical. And uh, we must not name one master and the other one standby because they are temporary roles that the clusters, that the servers assume at a point in time. We, we should probably name them Angus and Malcolm and have the ACDC uh, database cluster, okay? So it's important to have names that, you know, give the same level of rights because the master is one, one day that, that Malcolm, for example, is the master and three months later, after an update of Postgres, it's the other way around. And it, it is important that we become familiar with this methodology. How we achieve that, it's very simple. We just had add hot standby in PostgreSQL conf that enables read-only operations on the standby. And by the way, they have identical configuration, both of them. So PostgreSQL conf uh, conf is, is identical and recovery conf sets both streaming and fallback method using Barman because Barman has an infinite basin of wall files imagine six months of data okay we can go back at any point in time so forget about the um, uh, standby that lost uh, that got out of sync problem. So we need to become familiar with these operations. This is a planned operation. It's a switchover. So applications are paused. We shut down the master. We allow the standby to catch up. We promote the standby. We switch, for example, virtual IPs so that applications know who the master is. And resume applications. This is downtime. And then we reconfigure the former master as new standby. This is a very good operation to do regularly to update PostgreSQL and the system. You do it that on the standby first, then you switch over, and then you update the, 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 the new standby. Whereas failover is unplanned, okay? So the master is, is down, we promote the standby, we change the virtual IP, we are in degraded state, so we need to rebuild a new standby. So there's always you know, the fight between manual switchover and manual failover. And uh, manual switchover is different from manual switchover procedure, where you have to you know, perform each step manually. Manual switchover means manually triggered but you should always automate the procedure using bash or beta ansible and remember enhance gradually so build up your system you know using you know from 0 to now we are already 80 just do that so that you are aware of you know you know more your system and so rpo is nearly 0 RTO is time of reaction and time of pro promotion, which we can measure by performing switch over over time. The criticality is you know, manual intervention, so we need reliable monitoring. We need tra to train people by you know, writing practices and documentation. So it, and it's really up to you whether to use uh, automated failover or, or, or manual, you know, it's, there are technologies that do that, you know, just be aware of the risks and, you know, as I said, risk assessment. Know what you're doing. And this architecture is very good for business continuity, 
And we, we have measured system, I mean, with, with uh, consistency, 99.99% uptime with this architecture, at least, if properly monitored and maintained. Now, you know, we add synchronous replication to the game. So it's the same architecture with synchronous replication. And that gives us zero data loss. All open source with just three servers. So you can choose whether the primary stand, uh, uh, synchronous standby is Bauman, and that gives you zero data loss backup, or the primary synchronous is the standby, and that gives you zero data loss cluster to reduce RTO, slightly reduce RTO. And it's just one configuration line in Postgres. That's it. You just flip them if you want one or the other. OK? This is in the PostgreSQL conf. Now, let's get up to 100 quickly, because I'm reaching the end of the talk. All we have to do is choose uh, an application that allows us to implement to automatically trigger the automated failover procedure we just wrote before. And you can use, for example, we write rep managers, so we, we use rep manager, we install it there and there, and we have a witness server where barman is. Okay? So rep manager 4 just came out, uh, I think a couple of days ago. Why did I do this? Sorry. Okay. So we, we just went up to 100, okay? And uh, there's more. And, uh, but I suggest that first we get up to here, and then we move on. And there are so many things. For example, think in terms of repeatable architectures. You find your architecture, and you redeploy the same one for different PostgreSQL clusters, reusing the same procedures. That's where you win. So people just know to do the same things in different servers. Automate everything. Automate everything. Use PG Bouncer if, if you want, or virtual IPs. You know, vi with PG Bouncer, you can control and shield connections to your PostgreSQL server. Use hook scripts for wall archiving to relay wall files on S3, for example, if you want to, and encrypt them. Use retry uh, pre hook scripts for that. You can have multiple standby servers and use cascading replications because, because right now, with these architectures, the single point of failure is the data center. Okay? So in some cases, that's, that's not enough. So if the data center explodes, you, yeah, you have S3 relay. So you have your data in Amazon, and you can use that. But through cascading replication, you can replicate the same architecture in a different data center and have the master there actually be a standby of a standby in the first data center, and so on. Okay, and over time, every six months, you, you swap to the other data center, and so on. And you become familiar with procedures. That's, that's what what's all about. You can use Docker containers if you want. If you, your database is as small, you know, and you want to use all streaming with synchronous replication. And the future is about this. This is where, for example, with Barman, we would like to go. So, for example, the limitation right now is that we copy the whole cluster. So the, it's a, we can't back up, for example, one single table. In the future, thanks to logical replication, we could actually copy all the changes of a single table. But that's, you know, that's at the moment just the future, okay? But theoretically, it's feasible. So conclusions, baby steps, and kiss. Keep, keep it simple. Start, you know, with small and grow over time while you grow your confidence about the, the architecture. 
is if it's something new, just explore and learn. Have fun. It's all about learning. We, we have to learn every day and unlearn as well. But learning is a fantastic journey in, in our jobs. Okay? Practice is the only way to mastery, mastery. So organize drills. Chaos monkey. Just shut down your database in production and see how long it takes for you to, 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 to recover. Plan regularly healthy downtime. So I'm using the, the word healthy because it's proven that you, if you plan for small downtimes regularly, so for example, a few minutes every three months, but you update your system, you update your Postgres, in the long term, your uptime will be better. If you don't keep your PostgreSQL servers updated and your systems updated, you're at risk. Okay? So don't believe that, oh, it works, we don't update it. Software is full of bugs everywhere. Don't believe if they, don't, if they tell you that software has no bugs. Okay? So keep your systems updated. So yeah, I think I've come to the end and uh, you know, if you have questions. Uh, actually, I don't know if you have time for questions right now. What do you think, Mark? We're going to have uh, lunch now. So. Maybe one question. Okay. One lucky question. Someone wants to make a question? They're all hungry. Oh, everybody's hungry. Okay. Thank you, Gabriele. Okay, thank you. Thank you.